Welcome everyone, I'm the Toku Professor, and we have something really fun to discuss today. This is Super Smash Toku, a game two of my students gave me in honor of reaching a thousand subs. The problem, of course, is that there is no cartridge inside the case because the game doesn't exist. But what if it did? Today we'll be exploring the characters and content that would be included in the ultimate tokusatsu fighting game. For their unkind joke, the two pranksters who gave me the fake game are currently here in detention, but though they're moping now, I think in the end they'll find this to be one of the most exciting classes they've ever attended. And you will too. Let's smash! Super Smash Bros. is a fighting game series developed by Nintendo, which is famous for uniting famous video game characters into one fun brawl. The series has gotten so popular that multiple crossover fighting game imitations have been produced. So, why not a tokusatsu Smash Brothers? Well, there are several reasons why not, and the most important one is, well, there's a good chance no one's thought of it. But even if they have, I imagine it's quite a challenge to gather a bunch of competing companies together and convince them all there is a lot of money to be made if they all turn their big characters over to a game developer. And even if all these companies agreed the game would succeed and went forward with the project, there is no guarantee the finished product would be well made or fun, and no guarantee it would only feature tokusatsu characters. In fact, some anime franchises like Gundam would probably squeeze their way in too, like they have in past toku crossovers. And maybe you students who also like anime would be okay with that. Though I'm no anime professor, I'm sure even I would put up with it. But once you let animes take over a chunk of the game, you wouldn't have much room left for more obscure tokusatsu characters, would you? But today, we'll imagine what it'd be like if a miracle occurred and we got the perfect tokusatsu-only crossover fighting game. Well, maybe not perfect. I'm not going to be overly unrealistic and give the game a thousand characters or anything. I'll allow a generous 35 characters for our imaginary game, which is about how many fighters there were in Super Smash Bros. Brawl. We're mostly going to focus on characters in this video, but we'll also delve into what stages based on iconic locations would be added. I will allow two stages for most of the major franchises, and one for the more minor franchises, though we won't mention all of the minor ones. Let's get started with the first major franchise. Of course, we have to begin with the Godzilla series. The world's favorite kaiju certainly deserves the first slot on our roster of fighters. He would likely be designed based on his 90s look, but would have multiple palette swaps based on his other appearances, such as the original version and Burning Godzilla. Determining what other Godzilla kaiju would make the cut for the game is a little tricky, but since the series is so popular, I am allowing us five more. I unfortunately don't think Angiris could be chosen for a side-scrolling fighting game since he is not upright, and Mothra and Rodan would be difficult to work in as well since they are built for flight. Perhaps they could be assist trophy characters or something. Mechagodzilla, however, or perhaps Kiryu, would be a perfect fit, as well as Gigan. King Ghidorah could probably be worked in too, and of course he'd have Mecha King Ghidorah as a palette swap. The last two Godzilla characters might be a little controversial. I chose Jet Jaguar, simply because he is well built for a fighting game, and Manila, who would be kind of like Pichu, the weak, joke fighter of Smash Brothers. Maybe King Caesar or Destoroya would have been better choices, but I'm pretty happy with this group of six. Since the Godzilla series is so popular, it is the only franchise I'm giving three stages. The first is Monster Island, Godzilla's home, which would also draw inspiration from the other islands in the Showa movies. The second stage would be Planet X from Invasion of Astro Monster. And the last stage would have to be Tokyo, because it would just have to be. The Super X would be present here and fire at the fighters. By the way, since this game would feature both human and kaiju-sized brawlers, all the characters would have to be standardized to human size so they could fight each other. That's perhaps a little disappointing for kaiju fans, I know, but you can imagine it like a stage show where you can witness smaller monsters. Anyway, that covers the Godzilla series, so let's move on to... Handling the Ultraman series was actually pretty easy. Ultraman and the Ultra that revived the franchise he started, Ultraman Tiga, are the playable characters, in addition to the popular Ultraman Zero who represents the newer Ultras. Then we also get two of the most popular monsters, Alien Balton and Gamora, to round out the cast. 
Both would get palette swaps based on other kaiju and seijin to make sure the other famous ones are also represented. Choosing two stages from the Ultraman shows is a little tougher, but I'm going with the Science Patrol headquarters, the iconic location of Ultraman's final battle against Zeton, and the Land of Light based on its more recent appearance. I wanted to also include the Monster Graveyard, but I can't be too greedy, I guess. Maybe that could be a DLC stage. <laughs> The common Riders would be great in a fighting game, but figuring out exactly which ones should be in the game is much more tricky. Obviously, Common Rider 1 has to be included, and Common Rider 2 would work well as a palette swap of the original Rider, but after that it gets tough. There are many popular Riders, as well as ones with great abilities for a fighting game. Plus, shouldn't we include at least one of the many villains from the shows? I think we can agree the popular Dino needs to be included, and probably Common Rider Black as well though I'm sure a bunch of you would prefer Amazon. But who should be the final rider? O's and Double are both popular, and it'd be a shame to deny the series reviving Kuga an opportunity. And what about Decade, who could represent many riders through the use of his rider cards? In the end, perhaps it would be wisest to go with Decade, though you may disagree. I also thought it would be fun to add the memorable Shocker Combat Man as a playable character to round out the Common Rider series cast. As for the stages, it'd be neat to battle atop the Den Liner as it travels through time. Fudo, the main setting for Kamen Rider Double, would probably be the other battlefield, though Zawame City from Gaim or the Skywall from Build would perhaps be your best match. It was even harder for me to decide which Super Sentai characters to include, other than Aka Ranger. He could have a white palette swap that looks like Zenkaiser, so that way we don't have to have a Zenkaiser character, but this is still extremely tricky. For one thing, it'd be a shame to only feature Red Rangers, but they are the leaders of their teams. Dragon Ranger, the first sixth Ranger, works well as a representative of the other colors, and perhaps there should be a girl Sentai included too, but I couldn't decide which one. I mostly settled on Shinkin Red as the next fighter, since he could have the female Shinkin Red as a palette swap. Giving this slot to Hurricane Blue or switching Dragon Ranger with Terra Ranger would also work. That leaves one more Super Sentai slot. At least, I'm allowing myself one more. Should it go to a Deca Ranger? Or a Hurricanger? Or Big One? I finally settled on Gokai Red. He is popular and can transform into other Rangers like Common Rider Decade can do with Riders. His problem, though, is that he doesn't have many moves he could perform without transforming. So maybe I need to go with Deca Red or Hurricane Red or even Gokai Silver instead. On the other hand, Gokai Red would have a cool final smash. Decisions, decisions. I guess I'll just go with the first Ranger I mentioned for each slot. But of course, feel free to disagree. As far as stages, the Super Sentai era is so long it is hard to choose just two iconic places, though the Dino House Curry Restaurant, the base of the Abba Rangers, would be a nice pick since it reappears often, and if the Gokai Galleon were the other stage, it could travel to other Super Sentai locations. There, I picked two. That covers all the content from what I call the Fantastic Four franchises owned by the big three T's of Tokusatsu, Toho, Tsuburaya, and Toei. But there is another series which deserves to be considered a major universe, though I sometimes don't count it because the company that owns Gamera doesn't start with a T. And there, I just gave away our next character. Of course Gamera deserves an invite to the brawl. In fact, we'll invite his most popular foe, Gauss, as well. I imagine it would be hard to work these oddly shaped fighters into a side-scrolling fighting game, but somehow it would have to be managed. The guardian of the universe and his arch enemy can't be forgotten. As for a stage, it would be cool to include a stage nearby Tokyo Tower, with Gauss nesting atop it, but since Gauss is a character, my next pick is the planet Terra from the incredibly silly and fun Gamera vs. Giron. I'm sure Gamera likes my pick. We have 13 slots left for characters, which is a pretty good amount, though it will shrink fast. Giant Robo and Red Baron are excellent representatives of the mecha branch of Tokusatsu, and Spectre Man would be an excellent addition as well. Dr. Gori's Saucer would be this hero's stage, and he could attack with his shurikens and specter flash. 
Toho, Subaraya, and Toei also own minor franchises that could get a moment in the spotlight in this game. Representing Toho, Godman, Zone Fighter, Guyford, and Riser Glenn from the Just Arisers could be chosen. Green Man and Megalo Man would also be good choices, but we are running low on slots and so these two might have to be relegated to DLC. I want to mention Zone Fighter for a minute since he is part of Godzilla's universe. He has so much potential for great attacks, even though his series was cut short. I don't know if you knew this, but he almost appeared in the 2014 Godzilla game for the PS4. Yep, he's certainly cut out to be a fighter. Subaraya Productions released some other tokusatsu productions as well. Mirror Man is a notable, popular one. For his appearance in our game, Mirror Man could have palette swaps based on other Subaraya minor heroes like Red Man, Fire Man, and Jumborg Ace, since we're running low on free slots. Andro Melos and Gridman are popular enough that they should get spots on the roster too. That leaves us with only three slots left, and I know who I would award them to. Kikator and Space Sheriff Gavin, two Toei heroes, need to be invited to the battle, especially Gavin. The often forgotten Metal Hero series he starred in ran for about 17 years uninterrupted, with a new show each year. That is some feat. The mascot of that series needs to make an appearance in our game. And I would award the final slot to Daimajin, Daie's other claim to fame aside from Gamera. This wrathful living statue appeared in several movies, including a whole trilogy named after him, and is worthy of making the cut in our awesome and unfortunately pretend game. And with that, we have completed the roster. Man, this would be such a fun game, even if the gameplay was no good. This selection of characters in the various stages would make it so fun regardless. Maybe this video will inspire someone to get the ball rolling on a real toku fighting game of this nature. Who knows? All our game needs now is a name. Hmm, it has to be something different enough from Super Smash Brothers so we don't get sued. So, how about Super Smash Ultra Brothers? Man, I'm a genius. Hope you liked this 1K subscriber video. It wasn't easy to make, I can tell you that. I have even more fun ideas for when we get to our next subscriber milestones, like 5,000 and 10,000. So if that makes you excited, be sure to subscribe and perhaps those videos will come sooner rather than later. You can also support me by checking out my eBay store where I sell Toku toys. I go as Geronimon on eBay. Also, I'd love to know what changes you'd make to the roster we created today. And that about does it. What'd you think of the class, Kashimukun and Pencil Leopard? It, it was, was awesome! awesome! I think we should keep playing pranks forever so we could get more detention time with the professor. Uh, uh, wait, what? Uh, that's not what I was trying to convey to them. Hey, you're right, Pencil Leopard. Let's wreak havoc tomorrow. Yeah! Uh, wait, hold, hold on, kids. Hold on. Uh, this was just a one-time thing. Uh, if you're naughty again, you're, you're going to have to sit through the entire history of Zilla with me. Ah, uh, uh, oh, they're gone. Bye, everybody. <laughs>